Hey everyone, my name is Destiny, and today I'm gonna to be showing you how I make a three minute breakfast, lunch, and dinner. My name is Will Edmond, also known as Plant Daddy, and in this video, we're gonna be cooking three vegan meals in 30 minutes. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm gonna cook a three hour breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Let's do this. For breakfast, I made a vegan cream cheese and raspberry jam quesadilla. So I started off with a whole wheat tortilla, and I added raspberry jam to one half, and vegan cream cheese to the other half. I then added about two tablespoons of vegan butter to my pan and let that melt. Ooh. Once that was melted, I then added my tortilla to the pan and let it cook for about two minutes or so, or until it was kind of golden brown and a little flaky. Once it was done, I then folded my tortilla in half. I added about a handful or so of blueberries on top and decided to finish it off with a light drizzle of blue agave syrup. This breakfast is so quick and easy, and it's a great way to get your fruit in in the morning. For breakfast, I'm gonna make some homemade country vegan butter biscuits. So I'm gonna go ahead and put two cups of unbleached flour, and then we're gonna add one tablespoon of bacon powder. Boom. One half a teaspoon baking soda, and then three fourths a teaspoon of pink sea salt. Now you wanna mix it up all in there real well, and then we're gonna add four tablespoons of vegan butter. Now you want your butter to be cold, cause this is very important don't have your butt at room temperature and you want to mash this in there until it all breaks up and then we're going to form a little well right there and then we're going to pour in our vegan milk now make sure you do that a little bit lightly at a time there we go that's exactly how you want your batter to come together just like that get your dough all nice and knead it real well now you don't want to over knead your dough so it's going to come out into a little soft ball just like that so this makes about four to six biscuits, depending on the size that you want. Now this is what we call in the country, these good old drop biscuits. Cause basically what we're gonna do, we're just gonna drop them on a pan and bake them in the oven on 450 for about 12 to 14 minutes until they're golden brown on the top. Now, since we're having vegan buttermilk biscuits, we're gonna cook some vegan sausages in here. Now you're gonna cook these patties for about two minutes on each side. Mmm, golden brown, smell good, look good, but it's only made with plants. Oh, look at her, baby. Our biscuits are ready. They're golden brown on the top. I have time to cut it open. Mmm, look how soft it is. I'm gonna go ahead, layer a piece of vegan cheddar on it, and add two of my vegan sausages. Now it's time to put that on the top. There we go. A vegan buttermilk biscuit with vegan sausages. Mmm, that's delicious. For breakfast, I made vegan eggs benedict with seitan bacon. First, I wrapped the tofu in a dish towel and pressed it for 20 minutes to get some of the liquid out. While the tofu was pressing, I made my marinade. I added low sodium soy sauce, some neutral oil, garlic powder, onion powder, nutritional yeast, black pepper, and black salt and mixed it all together. Then I cut my tofu into squares roughly resembling the size of eggs. I added my tofu to a container and poured on the marinade and then shook it up to make sure it was well coated. While the tofu was marinating, I started on my seitan bacon. To a food processor, I added some pinto beans, olive oil, low sodium soy sauce, maple syrup, tomato paste, liquid smoke, and some vegetable broth. Then I blended that all up until it was really smooth. Then to a bowl, I added some vital wheat gluten, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, onion powder, smoked paprika, and black pepper, and stirred that all up and made a little well, which I poured my liquid ingredients into. Then I mixed that until it came together enough where I was able to use my hands, and then I kneaded the dough for about five minutes to really help that gluten develop. After that, I formed the dough into a loaf-looking shape and I rolled it up in some parchment paper and then rolled it up again in some aluminum foil. I popped it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I gave it a flip every 20 minutes so that it cooked evenly. Then to a container, I added some low sodium soy sauce, neutral oil, maple syrup, liquid smoke, tomato paste, smoked paprika, and garlic powder and whisked that all together until it was well combined. And this is gonna be our sweet and smoky glaze for the bacon. When the seitan was finally done, I took it out of the oven and let it rest for about 10 minutes. Then I started to cut it into slices roughly the size of Canadian bacon. I added the bacon to the marinade and spoon some of the liquid over it to make sure it was well coated. Then I let it marinate for 20 minutes, flipping it halfway through. 
Then I started on my hollandaise sauce, adding in some non-dairy milk, vegan butter, Dijon mustard, lemon juice, black salt for that egg-like flavor, garlic powder, turmeric to add some yellow color, nutritional yeast, salt, and a pinch of black pepper and whisked that all together. I also added in some cornstarch to help it thicken up. Once it came to a boil and the consistency was where I wanted it, I removed it from the heat. Then I added my tofu to a skillet and gave it a little sprinkle of turmeric to give it a yellow color and help it resemble eggs. Then I fried it for a couple minutes on each side until it was nice and golden brown. At this point I also popped my English muffin into the toaster. Then once my bacon was done marinating I added it to a skillet and fried that up until it was crispy. Then to assemble I added on my bacon, tofu eggs, and then drizzled on some hollandaise sauce. Even if it doesn't taste exactly the same, it was really delicious as its own meal. It does take a bit of work, but for a special occasion, it's a fun recipe to try. For lunch, I had chickpea pesto zucchini noodles. I started off by heating a bit of oil in a pan. I then added about a cup of chickpeas and about half a cup of tomatoes, as well as a spice blend of salt, garlic powder, and red pepper flakes and sauteed that a bit. While the chickpeas and tomatoes were cooking, I spiralized two zucchini. I love zucchini noodles as a low carb substitute for pasta. It makes for a super light lunch. I then added some vegan pesto and mixed that up really well. I absolutely love pesto. Once the chickpeas and tomatoes were done cooking, I then added it all to the zucchini noodle mixture and that's it, super simple. I added extra red pepper flakes because I love my food spicy. I love this lunch because it's super light and you still get your noodles, but they're veggies. Next, we're gonna do some vegan enchiladas. So we're gonna go ahead and put some good old sunflower oil in there. About a half of a cup of red onion. Oh yeah, there we go. And then you're gonna add some good old jalapenos in there. Now you wanna stir this up real good. You hear that sizzle, you hear that pop? So we're gonna add a teaspoon of garlic and go ahead and give this a good old stir. Next, we're gonna add some plant-based crumbles. Break this all down until it browns. And now you wanna go ahead and season with a little bit of adobo powder, about a half a teaspoon. And then my favorite season, a good old paprika. So you're gonna put a couple of dashes, some extra fine pink salt, just a little bit. Stir it up, get that nice Mexican flavor. And now we're gonna pour in 3 fourths of a cup of enchilada sauce. Mm, this is looking so saucy and so good. You're gonna pour three fourths a cup of enchilada sauce on your tortillas. You don't have to coat them too much, but you just get them a little damp. Put them on our plate like that. Then we're gonna fill some mixture inside of it. We're gonna fold these babies over. All right, then you're gonna put the bottom part down. This should be enough mixture to make about four to five enchiladas, enough to feed a family or enough to feed you if you're really hungry. Now you wanna drizzle the rest of your enchilada sauce on your enchiladas. Next, I'm gonna add some Kobe Jack shreds. I like my enchiladas to be kinda cheesy. Then I'm gonna sprinkle a little parsley on there just like that. And also, I like to sprinkle a little red onions on the top. Now we're gonna bake this at 375 for about 15 minutes. That cheese is melted and then that crust on the side, I think it's time. Mm, I could eat the whole pan. For lunch, I made portobello mushroom and chimichurri tacos. First, I got started on my pickled onions by adding red wine vinegar, water, sugar, and salt to a saucepan. And then I whisked it up and brought it to a boil until the sugar dissolved. Then I sliced up some red onions, poured the vinegar mixture over it, and let those sit for about three hours while I prepared the rest of the meal. Then I took two portobello mushrooms and removed the stem from each of them, and then cut them into slices about a fourth of an inch thick. I chose portobello mushrooms because I wanted these to resemble those classic chimichurri steak tacos. For the mushroom marinade, I added some low sodium soy sauce, neutral oil, lime juice, Worcestershire sauce, however you say that, chili powder, garlic powder, powder and cumin and mix that all up. Then I added in my mushrooms and I let those marinate for 90 minutes and flip them halfway through. And then because we're going all out here, I decided to make my own homemade tortillas. So to a bowl, I added some all-purpose flour, baking powder, salt, two tablespoons of oil, and some water and mixed that all up until I could form it into a dough. I kneaded that for a couple of minutes and then let it rest for 10 minutes so the gluten could develop. 
Then I tore off little pieces of dough and rolled them out into very thin tortillas. They did not all look beautiful, but that's okay because they're all gonna taste great. Then to a very, very hot pan, I added my tortilla and cooked it for a couple minutes until it started to bubble, flipped it over until it had browned on both sides. Then I got started on my queso fresco and boiled some cashews for about 10 minutes until they were tender. I added those to the food processor with some water, lemon juice, apple cider vinegar, nutritional yeast, salt, and blended that until it was almost smooth. Then I added in this amazing ingredient, which is agar agar powder, and pulsed it a few more times. Then to activate the agar agar, I added it to a saucepan and whisked it continuously until it came to a boil. The agar agar is a type of seaweed which works as a vegan gelatin and is going to help hold the cheese together when you put it in a mold. Then I popped the cheese in the refrigerator and let it chill for one hour to firm up. Then I added my portobello mushrooms to a baking sheet with a baking rack and let those bake at 375 for 25 minutes, flipping them halfway through. While the mushrooms were baking, I made my chimichurri sauce by combining cilantro, parsley, lime juice, yellow onion, garlic, red wine vinegar, some olive oil, salt, and pepper to a food processor and blended that up until it was smooth. After the cheese had chilled for an hour, I took it out of the mold and broke off pieces into little crumbles. And then finally, it was time to assemble. These tacos were so good. I don't know why I haven't made chimichurri sauce before because it is so flavorful. And the homemade tortillas were definitely worth the extra work. And they're also a great zero waste way to eat tortillas. The portobello mushrooms also had a great meaty texture. So this is the perfect dish to make for meat eaters who wanna eat a little bit more plant-based. For dinner, I made peanut sesame noodles. To a boiling pot of water, I added top ramen, some frozen edamame, and some frozen broccoli. While that was cooking, I then made a peanut sauce out of peanut butter, low sodium soy sauce, sesame oil, and garlic powder. I mixed it up, but it was kind of thick, so I added some water until it thinned out to the consistency that I liked. Once the noodles were done cooking, I drained it all together and then added it to my bowl. I then added my peanut sauce to the noodles and mixed it up really, really well. For some extra kick, I added some sriracha and some sesame seeds on top, and that's really it. I love making these noodles after work when I don't feel like cooking, but still wanna get some veggies in. Also, everything I used was stuff I already had either in my freezer or pantry, so it was super simple. We're gonna be making some vegan Alfredo with chestnut mushrooms. So we're gonna put just a little bit of sunflower oil in there, one red onion in your skillet, just a half a cup of this vegetable broth, and you're gonna let this cook down for about eight minutes. So you're gonna eventually wait till this all evaporates. Now we're gonna add four large cloves of minced garlic, stir it up in there. Now you wanna go ahead and add your onion mixture to your blender. Now we're gonna add the remaining of our vegetable broth, half a cup of soaked cashews, one tablespoon of lemon juice, four tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Now this is gonna get a good old cheesy flavor. A half a teaspoon of pink sea salt. So we're gonna put a little bit of black pepper in there. a fourth of a cup of this good old Parmesan cheese. And now we're gonna blend it. That's exactly how you want your Alfredo sauce to look. Now it's time to boil our pasta. So we're gonna go ahead and salt our water. We're gonna go ahead and add our Italian fettuccine. Now for our final step, we're gonna add some walnut oil. And these are our chestnut mushrooms. Then we're gonna add a bit of this Roasted garlic powder. Going to add a little bit of pink sea salt, a little black pepper, and some parsley. Just want to add a little bit of vegetable broth. Now we're going to pour our vegan Alfredo sauce back in there. It's real creamy, just like Alfredo sauce. Look at there. Next, I'm going to add my pasta back to my sauce. Oh yeah, that's going to be so good, y'all. Look how creamy this is, y'all. Oh my goodness. There we go, baby. Now I like to sprinkle a little bit of parsley on mine like that. Mm, 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 mm. Look at that. Mm, mm. This is what we call banging. For dinner, I made a three hour vegan chicken and dumplings. First, I wrapped the tofu in a dishcloth and let it press for 30 minutes. Then I made my marinade. I added low sodium soy sauce, nutritional yeast, garlic powder, salt, pepper, grapeseed oil, some dried thyme, non-dairy milk, and some apple cider vinegar to help create a buttermilk. 
Then I tore the tofu into bite-sized pieces and mixed it until it was well coated. I let it marinate for two hours and gave it a good mix every 30 minutes. While the tofu was marinating, I boiled my potatoes with the skins on. This makes them a lot easier to peel. Then I broke them up into a bowl and mashed them until they were really smooth. If you have a potato ricer, that would also be a great tool to use here. Then I added in some potato starch. My potatoes ended up being pretty large, so I added about a half a cup. But depending on how big your potatoes are, you can use more or less. You just wanna use enough so it feels like your potatoes are holding together well. Then I covered my dough with a dishcloth and set it aside. When my tofu was done marinating, I added it to a baking sheet and baked it for 40 minutes, flipping it halfway through. Then to a large pot, I added some neutral oil and my cut up carrots and onions. Normally you put celery in this as well, but I just cannot stand celery. I don't know what is wrong with me. So I left it out, but you should absolutely add it in here if you like it. I let those cook for a few minutes until the onions were semi-translucent, and then I added in my garlic and cooked that until it was fragrant. Then I added in a big hunk of vegan butter and let that melt down, some flour, and stirred it together to create a roux. Once the roux started to get toasty, I added in my vegetable broth, some dried thyme, some pepper, and two bay leaves. Then I mixed that all together and let it simmer for about 20 minutes to let all the flavors come together. When my tofu was done, I took it out of the oven and it looked crispy and delicious. I removed my two bay leaves and added my tofu chicken into the pot. Then I added in some frozen chopped kale, which isn't really traditional in chicken and dumplings, but I really wanted to get some greens in and I really like kale in soups. I lowered the heat at this point because it's really important that the water is not boiling when you add in your potato dumplings. You want it to be on low where it's almost simmering, otherwise the dumplings are going to fall apart. I let the dumplings cook for 15 minutes. This dumpling soup is one of the best things I have made in a very long time. It's perfect for winter. You can prepare the tofu the day ahead, let it marinate overnight, but trust me, it is so worth it.